Hey everyone, and welcome back to the show where we break down the biggest global headlines. Today we're diving deep into the wild world of economics. Don't worry, we'll keep it fun. I promise. We're talking about Saudi Arabia, oil, and a whole lot of money changing hands. I think of it like this. The world economy is a giant monopoly board, and Saudi Arabia just made a power move that could shake up the entire game. Intrigued? You should be. We're going to unpack Saudi Arabia's decision to join BRICS, a group of emerging economies looking to challenge the status quo. Get ready for a wild ride. Let's go. Imagine this. You walk into your favorite coffee shop, the one with the comfy chairs and the perfect lat art. The barista knows your name, your order, and even asks about your day. It's your little haven, a place where everything feels just right. But today, something's different. They're no longer accepting your usual payment method. Instead, they've got a whole new system, a new currency, and everyone's scrambling to adapt. You see signs everywhere explaining the new process, and... Customers are looking around, bewildered, trying to figure out how to pay for their coffee. That's kind of what's happening with Saudi Arabia and the global economy right now. It's like the entire financial world walked into their favorite coffee shop and found out they need to learn a new way to pay. For decades, the US dollar has been the world's go-to currency for trade, especially for oil. It's like the gold standard, except it's green. The dollar has been the backbone of global trade, the currency everyone trusts and uses. But Saudi Arabia, the world's largest oil exporter, just threw everyone a curveball by joining BRICS. This isn't just a minor change. It's a seismic shift in the economic landscape. This group, made up of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and now Saudi Arabia, wants to create its own economic playing field. They are looking to establish a new set of rules, a new currency, and a new way of doing business that doesn't rely on the US dollar. They're aiming to challenge the dollar's dominance and create a new world order, at least financially speaking. This move could reshape global trade, influence exchange rates, and alter the balance of economic power. It's a bold move, folks, and one that could have massive implications for everyone, from Wall Street to Main Street. Investors, businesses, and even everyday consumers could feel the ripple effects of this change. Think of it like this. The world is used to ordering its economic Latin dollars. It's a familiar process, one that everyone understands and relies on. Now Saudi Arabia is saying, hey, we're open to other options, maybe even a BRICS blend. This new blend could mean new opportunities, new challenges, and a whole new way of thinking about global trade and finance. So next time you sip your coffee, remember, the world of finance is brewing up something new, and it's going to be an interesting blend to taste. So, who are these BRICS anyway, and why should we care? Well, they're kind of like the new kids on the block, but they're growing up fast. They represent a huge chunk of the world's population and economic potential. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. These countries are not just populous, they are also some of the fastest growing economies in the world. They're tired of playing by the old rules set by the US and other Western powers. For decades, the global financial system has been dominated by Western institutions like the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. They want a bigger say in how the global economy works. They believe that the current system is skewed in favor of the West and doesn't adequately represent their interests. For years, they've been quietly building their own systems, their own banks, and their own financial agreements. The New Development Bank, also known as the BRICS Bank, is one such initiative aimed at providing an alternative to Western financial institutions. Now, with Saudi Arabia on board, they've got some serious clout. Saudi Arabia's involvement adds significant weight to the BRICS coalition, given its influence in global energy markets. They're looking to create alternatives to the dollar, new ways to trade, and new ways to invest. This includes exploring the use of their own currencies for trade and investment reducing their reliance on the US dollar. Think of it like this. If the dollar is like the established reliable family sedan of currencies, BRICS is like the sleek new electric car everyone's buzzing about. It's innovative, it's exciting, and it promises a lot of potential for the future. It's got potential, it's turning heads, but it's still got a lot to prove. The BRICS nations have to demonstrate that their systems can be as stable and reliable as the existing ones. The question is, can BRICS really challenge the dollar's dominance, the US? Dollar has been the world's primary reserve currency for decades and changing that won't be easy. 
Can they create a system that's stable, reliable, and attractive enough for the rest of the world to adopt? This is the ultimate test for BRICS. They need to build trust and show that their financial systems can handle global economic pressures. Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure. This is a game changer. The rise of BRICS represents a significant shift in the global economic landscape, and it's something everyone should be paying attention to. To understand why Saudi Arabia's move is such a big deal, we need to talk about petrodollars. It's not as complicated as it sounds, I promise. See, back in the 1970s, the US struck a deal with Saudi Arabia. They'd buy their oil in US dollars, and in return, the US would provide military protection and support. This agreement essentially made the US dollar the go-to currency for oil transactions worldwide. Think of it like this. Imagine if you could only buy pizza with gold. Gold would become super valuable, right? That's what happened to the dollar because of oil. This system, known as the petrodollar system, has been in place for decades. It's given the US a lot of economic and geopolitical power. But now, things are changing. Saudi Arabia joining BRICS suggests they're open to moving away from this dollar-dominated system. They might start accepting other currencies for oil, maybe even a BRICS-backed currency. This could weaken the dollar's global standing and have ripple effects throughout the global economy. Why ditch the dollar? Saudi Arabia's got reasons. Now, you might be wondering why would Saudi Arabia want to rock the boat? Well, there are a few reasons. First, they want to diversify their options relying too heavily on one. Currency can be risky. It's like putting all your eggs in one basket. By embracing BRICS, Saudi Arabia is hedging its bets, exploring new markets, and potentially securing its economic future in a changing world. Second, they're not thrilled with US foreign policy. The relationship between the US and Saudi Arabia has been strained lately, to say the least. By aligning themselves with BRICS, Saudi Arabia is sending a message. They're looking for new partnerships and new ways to exert their influence on the world stage. Finally, there's the China factor. China is a major player in BRICS and a huge importer of oil. By joining BRICS, Saudi Arabia strengthens its ties with China and potentially opens up new markets for its most valuable commodity. A new world order? Maybe, maybe not. Let's break it down. So, does this mean the dollar is doomed? Is this the end of the US? As a global superpower? Well, hold your horses. It's not that simple. The dollar's dominance has been challenged before, and it's weathered many storms. It's still the world's reserve currency, meaning it's held by central banks worldwide. It's still used. In countless international transactions, it's not going away anytime soon. However, there's no denying that Saudi Arabia's move is significant. It's a sign that the global economic landscape is shifting. The US can't take its dominance for granted. The rise of BRICS and other emerging economies means the world is becoming multipolar. Power is becoming more diffuse. We're moving away from a unipolar world dominated by the US towards a more multipolar world with multiple centers of power. Think of it like this. The world is becoming more like a team sport than a solo act. The US is still a major player, but they need to learn to play with others. Winners and losers. Who benefits from a shifting global economy? Now, every good story has its winners and losers. So who stands to gain the most from this potential shift in global economic power? Well, BRICS countries are obvious contenders. They get to rewrite the rules, increase their influence, and potentially benefit from a more equitable global economic system. Countries that have been on the sidelines of the dollar-dominated system also stand to gain. They might find it easier to trade, invest, and participate in the global economy on their own terms. But there could be losers too. The US could see its economic and geopolitical influence diminish. Countries heavily reliant on the dollar might face instability and uncertainty. It's important to remember that economics is not a zero-sum game. One country's gain doesn't necessarily mean another's loss. Cooperation and collaboration will be key to navigating this new landscape. What about us? How this impacts your wallet and your world? I know what you're thinking. This is all very interesting, Revener, but how does it affect me? Well, my friend, even if you're not a Wall Street tycoon or an oil baron, these global shifts have a way of trickling down. A weaker dollar could mean higher prices for imported goods, from your morning coffee to your next smartphone. It could also affect your investments, travel plans, and even job prospects, depending on how things play out. 
On the flip side, a more multipolar world could lead to greater economic opportunities for everyone. It could foster innovation, competition, and a more balanced global order. It could even lead to a more peaceful and prosperous world where countries are more interconnected and less likely to go to war. The key takeaway here is that we're all connected. What happens on the global stage affects us all, whether we realize it or not. It's more important than ever to stay informed, engage in thoughtful discussions, and demand that our leaders make decisions that benefit everyone, not just a select few. Think about it. When you read the news or scroll through your social media feed, you're not just consuming information, you're participating in a global conversation. Education plays a crucial role in this. By understanding the complexities of our interconnected world, we can make more informed choices and it's not just about understanding, it's about action, voting, community involvement and grassroots. Movements can all drive change. For instance, supporting sustainable practices and renewable energy can have a positive impact on both the environment and the economy. Volunteering and supporting charitable organizations can also make a difference, helping to build a more equitable world. Cultural exchanges and understanding can foster peace and cooperation, breaking down barriers and building bridges. Collaborative efforts in science and health can lead to breakthroughs that benefit all of humanity. Celebrating these achievements reminds us of what we can accomplish when we work together. So let's stay connected, stay informed, and work towards a brighter, more inclusive future for everyone. After all, the world is what we make of it, and together we can make it better.